everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and uh, we're going to continue with this mill um, which we had started a few weeks back um, mainly just focusing on the area where the mill is sitting so all this area here we have to um, look into I might even cut this path back because it's too big so I might cut that back so it's just a, a couple of slabs so I may just do that and then put in some stone walling along the side, have an opening here and an opening here in the stone walling so we've got access to both doorways um, so yes that's what we're going to do, we're going to concentrate on the surrounding area and finish off this little tiny space um, yeah so it could blend in with the railway. Now I've had some photographs off um, George Tullin. He sent me some photographs of the mill inside and how it looked uh, in the 1980s. Um, so yeah. Now in the photographs uh, that I have, um, you can't see it, but there are windows blocked off, bricked up as it were in a few places um, so I'm doing it as it is um, or as it was um, back in the 1980s with the three um, openings either side um, yeah so uh, let's get cracking see how far we get this week Right, so here we are, we're back at the bench, and um, yep, there's not a mill in sight, because um, we're going to work on the walls uh, that's going to go around the mill, just to add that little bit of extra detail. Now, you've seen me use this stuff before, um, when I did the cheap version um, walls, remember, I just rounded the radius over and then painted it up. But this time, I'm just going to add a little bit extra to the walls. Now, if you look closely, I have added a piece of 4 mil card to create the um, concrete post, as it were. And then now, I'm just capping off the top of this stone wall with various thicknesses of card, 2 mil and 1 mil card. Um, I've cut the card into 6mm um, strips um, which, and then 5mm high and as you can see I've just rounded them over slightly and that's going to give us a, a nice um, capping off to the walls. Now I've not done this before so it'll be interesting to see what this looks like once it's all painted. So here are the, the strips of of card this is one mil and this is the the two mil strip so I'm just roughly cutting them out at six mil wide which is the width of the wall and and I'm just rounding off the edges edges individually this is going to take some time because I've got about a meter of walling to do um, the reason why I'm doing a meter because once it's done I'll have enough to go elsewhere so I'm just chopping off the corners um, at random so it doesn't matter if it's not uh, uniform at all and a tiny bit of super glue on the last piece of card and with the super glue being nice and runny it'll run down onto the cork as well so we'll just put that piece on there so so as you can see we'll, we'll just keep doing that and then doing that until eventually we'll end up with some nice cappings so just doing it at random so now and again I'll throw in a, a two mil piece of card as long as I keep them roughly the same height they don't have to be because as we know um, walls are very random anyway so I shall... And another thing I'm doing, uh, which I forgot to mention just now, is I'm just running the scalpel along this edge just to take the sharp corners off. Because as you can see on the, on the lower edge, there's a nice sharp corner there. But I just want to get rid of that, just so that um, it looks like the stones are just placed on there. 
so the wall is not sharply cut by the stonemason or whatever. So I'm just taking, it don't matter if, if uh, a lot of it comes off or you take too much off cause, because that's what stone wallings are, are like. So I'm just taking the edges off. So I've cut up little tiny pieces of card, 6mm by 5mm, and I'm just taking off the corners and then just rounding it over. Um, as I said earlier, it's very random this, um, because stones are random. And um, as you can see, it does look very effective so far, and I haven't even painted it yet. So. These things are just, well, well these ideas is just to give you a, an insight what can be ach achieved. Um, so there's a couple of uh, one mil pieces, I'll just chop this two mil piece up a little bit. Um, we'll just like so, and then we'll just stick them on. So yeah, it, it's getting there as you can see. And then we just use a little tiny bit of super glue. Okay, and just drop these stones in. As random as you like. Right, so here's the first section of all done. Now that's taken me about an hour to do, and it's roughly about four inches long. And um, yeah, it looks quite realistic at the moment without the paint. So I shall continue now and get all the walling done that I need for that area, and then we'll, we'll have a look um, how I'm going to paint it. Once uh, all the walls are made. So I shall carry on. I have now placed the two walls that I've done so far um, where they're going to be. Um, and yeah, they're looking quite smart. There's still one more wall left to do, uh, which is going to start from there and go right to the end of the baseboard. Um, I've had to cut back this corrugated fence and extend uh, this wall by 60 uh, millimeters and uh, what I'll do is I'll continue putting this stone wall right along this edge um, for future um, videos uh, etc so that uh, when we're viewing down at this level we've got uh, a wall that we're peering over rather than just a, a little piece of um, 3 mil plywood so yeah in all it's it's coming together and um, yeah so there'll be a small gate there um, the old kissing gates style something like this so as I say open it up one way um, so you can stand in the area then close it it's just to stop the any livestock walking around um, the pub area I guess <laughs> uh, yeah so that'll be the only gate, um, obviously this is the edge of the baseboard here and this will just be no man's land and that's where the end uh, I'm not, there's no plans to extend it further to create a field or anything like that it's just because there's just no space um, so I'll just place the mill uh, temporarily to get an idea of how it's going to go so I'll just place that there so what will happen is there will be a small path that will go to uh, here and then there will be a path that will go round the mill on both sides um, where people would um, clamber around and walk round the mill generally and then the path will then continue well, to the edge of the baseboard. So that's the plan. So what we'll do, we'll concentrate on the last and final wall.
um, cut this to suit and glue these two pieces of wall together and then I can um, paint and weather the walls obviously uh, meanwhile we're back at the bench and we're continuing to cut the capping stones for the walling um, as you've noticed I have mated the two pieces of wall which come together at that uh, road junction and um, after all I've done there is just continued with the road stones this way and mated some little tiny stones to go um, this way in this direction um, these little chippings <laughs> where I've been putting the radiuses on the stones I've kept them and um, I have made this basically I've painted a bit of card uh, one mil card as you can see there I haven't painted the edge yet and I've just super glued all the chippings onto this and what I'll do is when I'll paint the wall I will paint this at the same time so it looks like we got some rubble um, left over from when they uh, built the wall or something like that or I could just place this on the layout somewhere else um, so yeah so I've kept <laughs> all the chippings and I have made that um, to, to go on the layout somewhere so in the meantime I shall continue to keep cutting these random top stones taking the corners off and just shaping them really yeah, don't have to be perfect I think I've said that already and then we'll just super glue those um, and then continue with the wall yeah so even though this does take a little bit of time um, as you can see it, it is worth it um, just dropping another stone in there so that's the corner as it stands at the moment With the walls now finished, I am now painting up the stones. Um, the colour I'm using is Semi-Mac 314, which is the uh, humbrol paint. And the idea here is to just get right into those nooks and crannies of the stonework. And uh, this is going to act like it's been rendered in theory hopefully but uh, certainly is a different way of doing these stones compared to how I've done them in the past so I shall continue with getting this paint right into the nooks and crannies of these stones And as I'm going along, I'm just wiping off some of the excess paint. As you can see there, it looks quite realistic already, and that's without the proper colour that I'm going to be using in a minute. Now I'm starting to add the second colour which is a matte 27, it's a humbrol paint and um, yeah I'm just putting it on ever so lightly and then rubbing it off so, and uh, we end up with this kind of texture and it does highlight all the individual stones. Right so just put a little bit on a brush, dab it onto a piece of towel and then just apply it um, by using the flat edge of the brush like so as you can see I'm not putting heaps on and it just highlights every single little bit of detail of the wall and then with another towel Another piece of towel and uh, just wipe it off. So basically you're just smearing the paint that you've just put on and uh, you end up 
is this kind of finish. Right, and finally we need to add some green. Um, so I'm using matte 253. Uh, same as what we did before, we'll dip it in the paint and uh, we'll dab it onto some towel just to take the paint off and then just lightly stroke it across the tops of these stones. As you see it's just highlighting the edges and leaving a little bit of green on there just to show that these have been out in the countryside. Always have a cotton bud to hand just in case you put too much on. So it's just mainly at the top edges of this walling. So you're just highlighting what it is. It's, it's highlighting all the little tiny cuts that we've put in, as you can see. Right, so here's the photographs I was talking about earlier in, in the video, um, um, which was taken inside the mill. And as you can see, there's a couple of um, beams there, and um, there are some lintels. Um, but obviously with the mill um, having its base on I might not be able to put the lintels in but I might be able to fit those two um, which look like wooden beams and uh, here's the another photograph showing the same thing now the beams run across the windows so yeah so I might be able to fit those in to the mill and I'll just show you um, this photo here um, where, where we have a window at right angles that's uh, 90 degrees to each other. So these photographs were taken back uh, in the 1980s. Uh, so, so it's interesting to see these and I'd just like to thank George Tullin for um, sharing these photographs with us. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of graffiti on there now. Um, but uh, there wasn't that many, or that much graffiti um, in the photograph that I had uh, used for the project originally. And uh, a, a recent tr trip up to the mill, the mill has been cleaned up and um, and it don't look as bad. As you see there, there's a fireplace there. It's right on the ground, as you can see. And there's the other doorway. Notice the height of the, the steps quite high off the ground. So there would have been a wooden floor in there possibly, um, originally. So yeah, so I thought I'd show you, share these photographs with you. And uh, let's go and have a look at the walls. I have now stuck the walls in place and I've added a, a path and some greenery uh, within the walls and obviously we're just waiting now for the mill to be finished off to complete this little scene. Um, I do like the way that the walls have turned out. I mean you can get really close up and look at the detail in that. So all those little tiny pieces of card cut, shaped and glued in one at a time just like the real thing. Right, so we'll uh, concentrate on the mill now. We've got a couple of uh, wooden beams to fit and uh, we can put that in place. Yeah quite like the way that that's looking at the moment. 
Boy, you see there's a little bit of greenery I've got put in this corner here. It looks too too clean. It looks like the paving has just been laid. So I've got to I've got to do something with that. But yeah, on the whole, so far so good. So what I'm doing now is I'm just making up a, a beam for the uh, mill, like we saw in the photograph just a, a few moments ago. So this is just a, a little bit of 2 mil card cut to a width of 3.5 millimeters, um, just to create that beam. I'm using a matte 166 brown. Um, to start with, so it's a nice dark brown. So, because obviously it's it's been out in the weather and what have you, so it'll be a really really dark piece of timber. Right. So just before that dries, I will add some grey to give it um, an aged look, which is satin one eight three, which is just. Uh, just next door to it, so I'll just uh, open up the tin, give it a little bit of a stir, and then just lightly brush this on while that brown is still damp. And this should just add a little bit of age to this beam. Yeah, it does, it does seem to be working. Right, and we'll leave this to dry, and uh, then we'll take some measurements. I don't know how I'm going to fit this yet, because uh, obviously the mill is glued to the base, so I'm going to have to glue it in from the top, and bearing in mind that it tapers. Yeah, I think, I think I've got the colour just about right there, if you can just make that out. So it's really old. Beam. I may have to wipe some of that grey off, but uh, yeah, that's what I was looking for for that. So we'll just let this dry and um, see if we can fit it. Right, so after a little bit of uh, measuring and adjustment, I have cut my beams. As you can see, I've tapered the, the ends so that they would fit the radius. So I'm just going to try one in. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit of rocket card glue and uh, we'll give this a go. So obviously I've got to go down as low as I can without touching the walls and then bring it back up again which is easier said and done than done. And just hold that in place. So it's just below the second window here. Now I haven't marked it or anything, so I'm just guessing. So there's one of them in. So it looks about right. I'll just look through the window, see if it's level. Yeah, it looks a bit, a bit too low. It might want to come up a little bit. So let's see if we can bring it up a little bit. And, and it's falling down. So yes, yeah, a little bit fiddly. But we'll keep trying, we'll keep persevering until I get these in. Right, so as you can see I've got, I've got the beams in there and I've added some black dots of paint there so it looks like there would have been other beams in there. But just like the photograph there's only two left. Anyway, I've been experimenting with this paint, um, shade Monitorian Grime. Uh, by Citadel and um, I thought I'd just brush it on lightly just around the top and um, 
it's seeped in and it's also highlighted the pen so I'm just doing the odd pieces um, just highlighting a few bits here and there I'm not going all the way down to uh, the base of the mill just around the top and then just adding a few streaks just to add that weathering look which I think just kind of highlights the stone as you can see it just Yeah, you know, I quite like the way that that is looking. Just do a few bits around these other windows. Yeah, I think I think I'll leave that at that. But I'll um, I'll put some more of this paint on the inside as well. Jesus. Yeah, I think that finishes it off. I think. Don't want to go too mad with this. Yeah, I think that that'll do me nicely. So I'll just put some more on the inside. Just give it a wash around the inside. just where it's been out in the weather for hundreds of years and I think I'll leave that at that I know in that those photographs it's quite white and bright inside but uh, I just like this old rustic look that this paint is given. Yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. Right, so with the beams fitted inside the mill and that little bit of weathering, it's time to have a look at the mill in its final resting place because it's now finished. And there it is. What a transformation to this little tiny area. Um, as you can see with the greenery and the little gate there, which um, happy travellers can wander through and make their way along the country path and I've added a tree uh, just to add that little bit of background detail for the mill and I've also capped off the walling there as you can see I've, that's been capped off all the way along it goes all the way along that edge so that just breaks it up a little bit now then, I'd just like to thank everybody who has um, commented regarding uh, the building of the mill. And a big thank you to George Tullin for the photographs. And um, one of you, I can't remember which one, mentioned something about having a bird's nest resting on that windowsill or window ledge. But instead of having the nest on that ledge, I've decided to put it inside. Yep. If we just look inside there, on that beam, if I just turn the camera around, there it is. There's a little bird's nest on that beam. So it does appear to leave comments because it does... Well, it's like having an extra pair of eyes, seeing something that, um, that possibly could be added to the build. And, um, yeah. So there we have it. The mill is now complete. Um, the surrounding area looks pretty good uh, for the moment. Obviously I may come back at some point and add 
some um, hitchhikers or something walking through there. But yeah, and the best thing about this is the walling. I mean, we do progress as we learn, um, and uh, I think that is far superior to the walls that I have done in the past. Although that looks good, it does not compare to the wall here at the mill. Right, I think that's all from me this week and I um, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and maybe you've learned something. Um, who knows? <laughs> This model in Malarkey, um, well, we all learn as we progress. Um, yeah. So, thanks again for watching. Until next time, stay safe, everybody. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.